Healthcare jobs could be some of the most rewarding careers, not only when we're talking about having a meaningful life and helping people out, but also when we're talking about money. Now, if you turn on your TV and watch all of these healthcare related shows, you probably think there's only three healthcare professions, doctors, nurses, and then once in a while you'll see a pharmacist. 28, 29, 30. Oh, hell, she ain't gonna miss one. <laughs> but the truth is, there's probably hundreds if not thousands of healthcare careers, and some of the best ones out there are ones that you pretty much never hear about. And on the flip side, the ones that you hear about all the time tend to get crowded, and because of that, they're saturated, and you could argue that they aren't the best. But in this video, we're gonna go over some healthcare careers that aren't as well known, and because of that, they're wide open. And I can promise you, by watching this video, you're gonna have a much better idea of some of the careers and opportunities out there for you, so go ahead sit back relax gently tap the like button and let's get started first one we're going to talk about on the list is going to be nursing informaticist so this is a career that is going to combine nursing as well as information systems so you're going to know the healthcare side of things as well as the information and technology side of things as well this is going to be used of course to help the workflow on a day-to-day -day basis store information and reduce mistakes nursing informaticists can expect to make around hundred thousand dollars a year next on the list we're going to talk about another great career that I've talked about several times on this channel and that is nurse practitioner and nurse practitioners are almost like many doctors they can do almost everything that a doctor can do they can prescribe they can diagnose but it's not going to take you like eight years of schooling and then another four to seven years of residency and then maybe even a fellowship after that in order to start on top of that you can specialize in something as a nurse practitioner but if you want to if you get bored for, with that for whatever reason you can always switch your specialty which is very difficult to do as a medical doctor. As a nurse practitioner, you would expect to make around $102,000 a year. Next on the list is going to be another one that's very similar to nurse practitioner. You're almost like a mini doctor as well, which is going to be physician assistant. Now they can prescribe and diagnose just like a nurse practitioner. The only difference is a PA does have to work directly under a doctor, whereas nurse practitioners are more autonomous. They can work on their own. Again, an extremely versatile career where if you get bored with your specialty or you don't like it anymore, more, you can very easily switch into a different specialty. Physician assistant and nurse practitioner are also growing like crazy. We're talking like 20-30% growth over the next 10 years according to BLS. And on top of that, you make around $112,000 a year as a PA. Next one on the list is going to be built environmental specialist. So every time you enter into a building, and this is something that we don't really think about because we live in a first world country, at least a lot of people watching this, if you live in the United States, uh, Britain, Canada, um, United Kingdom, etc. So this is something you don't really think about, but every single time you enter into a building, you're putting your life into the hands of the people who built the building and the people who inspect it. Now, if they've done their jobs right, you really have nothing to worry about, but if they haven't, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. For instance, a small earthquake might cause the foundations to buckle and then, you know, the building just collapses down and that's not going to be good. But of course, there's a lot more to think about than that. We're talking fire safety, air safety. They also make sure that there's no infestations from, you know, cockroaches or rats. Now, these are people that have to have some medical knowledge in order to do this job because you're not just inspecting any building. You're going to be inspecting hospitals, clinics, etc. Sometimes you'll be called in to actually help design these buildings if they're in the construction process as well. And generally speaking, you're going to be working for a government agency and built environmental specialists may around hundred and thirteen thousand dollars a year next on the list is going to be pharmacist and I said this is the one that pops up on TV every once in a while so I wasn't going to include it but I wanted to put it on this list because of the fact that most people when they think of a pharmacist in their head what do they think of they think of the person who's at the drugstore they think of the person who's at CVS or maybe the uh, grocery store however there is actually 47 different types of pharmacists that I could find and only a few of them work in the retail or community setting. So this is why it's so important that you do your research on different careers. The perception of the career that you have in your mind is almost always not going to be the reality. Just to name a few, there's ambulatory care pharmacists, clinical pharmacists, staff pharmacists in hospitals, long-term care pharmacists, managed care pharmacists, informatics pharmacists, psychiatric pharmacists, pediatric pharmacists. I think you guys get the picture. Pharmacists, of course, make pretty good money. They make around $126,000 a year. This is 
is not one that you should sleep on. Of course, you need to make sure to do your research, figure out which one of these career paths you want to go into. It's not going to be for everybody. However, this is the career that I chose and I'm very happy with it. Next on the list is going to be forensic odontologist. Now, this is going to be a special type of dentist and you might have seen somebody like this on TV, maybe a crime show, for instance, where they're going to be able to identify somebody's remains just by maybe their teeth, for instance. Sometimes they're even able to do it by tracing back bite marks. So a few examples where a forensic odontologist would be called in is let's say somebody's body burned up in a fire. The only thing that was remaining was the teeth. They could use those teeth in order to identify that person. Same goes with a plane crash. It's kind of the same sort of situation. You might not have that many remains, but you still need to identify people's bodies. Of course, they would be employed by different police forces and government agencies. And in some cases, they would be called in by lawyers to testify as well. They can also be used in archaeology. So let's say they find a really old skull that's maybe 100,000 years old. They can be called in to identify, you know, what animal that is and also how old it is. And they're going to be making around $150,000 to $185,000 a year. Next on the list is going to be a pharmaceutical scientist. And this is going to be a special type of scientist that works in the pharmaceutical industry. And generally speaking, they're going to be working on the discovery and development of new drugs. So the people who developed the recent vaccines would have been pharmaceutical scientists, for instance. And it's not just vaccines, they create all kinds of different drugs in pretty much every type of illness you can think of. So for instance, a well-known one would be warfarin, which is used to treat cardiovascular disease. And that was actually discovered because it was rat poison originally. It was originally used to kill rats and then cows started eating it and they started bleeding to death. And that's how it was originally discovered for its anticoagulation properties. Same goes for antibiotics like penicillin, for instance, that was discovered when they found that fungus had antibiotic properties. Now, of course, it's a little more sophisticated these days. They've really got it down to a science, but overall, it's really awesome. And they really make a wide range, somewhere between $104,000 to $210,000 a year, depending on the source that you look at. Next on the list is going to be nurse anesthetist. And this is basically a specialized type of nurse practitioner. So that's one great thing about nursing in general is you can stop at a certain point, you know, after you get your BSN, for instance, work for a while. Then if you feel like you want to advance a little more, you can go ahead and become a nurse practitioner, work for a little bit, and then you can get even more specialized than that. You can go all the way up to the doctorate level if you want to. So nurse anesthetists, as the name suggests, they are going to be working with anesthesiology. They're going to be putting people under, for instance, before they go into surgery. They're going to be working along with anesthesiologists, which of course are medical doctors, and they can do many of the same things that the anesthesiologists can do. And they can make a ridiculous amount of money. Like it's pretty close to what a medical doctor makes. They make somewhere around $157,000 to $214,000 a year. If you haven't done it already, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And before you leave, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.